Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dynasty After Dark. I'm your host, Calvin Timms. Find me over on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin and the Dynasty After Dark YouTube channel. You can find my co-host on Twitter at Dynasty underscore Dale. And we're back. It's draft week. I'm super excited. It's going to be a fun one. You know, hopefully you guys have been following along. Today we're going to be bringing out our tight end rankings. We're not breaking this into two parts because we just want to get it done and over with as quickly as possible because it's gross. Tight ends are absolutely gross. <laughs> they are disgusting. So we're just going to do one today, and then we're going to probably come out with a final mock draft predictive, maybe? Maybe a predictive, maybe a what we would do. I don't know. We'll figure that out. But that's going to be coming later this week as well before the draft actually hits. I got one more piece of content for you guys I'm keeping secret. And then on Friday, Saturday, we'll be issuing our recaps of day one and day two. Not going to recap day three on Sunday just because it doesn't really matter as much. It's not going to be as critical. So Friday, Saturday, we'll be recapping the first couple rounds of the draft. And yeah, it's going to be a good time. And we'll break it out a little bit more. We'll do final rookie rankings next week, I think. And then we'll, uh, and then we're officially into the offseason where everybody's drafts start kicking up. We can start talking about player specifics. And yeah, it's going to get a lot more fun after the NFL draft this upcoming week. Dale, how's it going today? Hey, I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good. Um, uh, my throat's a little scratchy, so it's going to be interesting this week. But yeah. I am very, I was going to say very excited to talk about tight ends, but I'm not. I just <laughs> I, I just want to talk about maybe six of them, and then and then the rest can all just do whatever. I at least have seven noteworthy. Yeah. It's growing. Yeah. It's growing. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, allergies are, are in full effect full right swing. now. So. Full swing. Yep. So, all right. So we won't drag it on too long. Again, before we get into it, if you can follow us on Twitter, like the video on YouTube, leave a review if you're not on YouTube, or if you want to leave a comment down below on YouTube, whatever it is, wherever you listen to the podcast, just help us out by getting us out there with the algorithm. You know, gotta gotta fake it till we make it. So you guys can help with that. And if you can tell the podcast to one of your friends. Come get our rankings. Maybe you want to keep them for yourselves, but you know, you know the funny thing. Um, I and I was just thinking about this the other day. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of my takes, right? They seem out there, and I do them so early, and then they almost all end up coming true. And it's like, oh, you've been there the whole time. It, oh yeah, you finally right. came around to this, just like everybody else. It's like, no, I've been sitting here the entire time, <laughs> the entire time. Like my quarterback rankings, everybody's starting to be down on Bryce Young for fantasy football. I've been here the entire time. And it's like, you know, everyone loves, hates Will Levis. I've been here the entire time. And, you know, it's just funny to me, like all these takes that are becoming crazy. Zach Charbonnet is most people's RB3 now. Kendra Miller is a lot of people's RB3 or 4. I've been here nope. the entire time. <laughs> it's like, you know, it, it, it's funny because I'm an engineer, right? So we can just kind of play things out to the end, like logically, you know? And I don't think right. a lot of people do that, and that kind of helps me here. But, you know, it is what it is. So come get your rankings here first, and in six months' time, this is what everyone's rankings are going to look like. That's the whole point exactly. of the story. Moral of nope. the story, right? <laughs> Moral of the story. All right, so that said, Dale, kick us off. What are your first? Who's your first tight end for Dynasty football? All right, all right. So in Dynasty tight ends, um, in in my tier one, it's 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 the only guy I got is Kyle Pitts. Um, he he was very very underwhelmed last year. Uh, he had Marcus Mariota who was throwing the ball to whoever except Kyle Pitts, and Arthur Smith was running the ball. And not getting the ball to everybody but Kyle Pitts, mm-hmm. and it's not fancy it was football, very, Dale. Yeah, I know it was very gross. It was very bad. I wish Arthur Smith would never call a play. But to be fair um, to Arthur Smith, and I do have Kyle Pitts up here in my top tier of guys as well, so I'll talk on him as well. But you know, the one thing for Arthur Smith, he has been a good coach. 
And, you know, ever since he's taken over the reins of this team, it's been a nightmare situation. They came in yeah, and the team was yeah. terrible. He, the last year, really everyone says, bad. oh, they were so bad. They were paying Matt Ryan $50 million to play for the Colts, and he was terrible. Colts. So it's like they had no money. You know, it's just we got to oh. remember that with the Falcons. And I get it. You know, okay. they were trying to do whatever yeah. they could to win games. It was just it was just it was just bad. And it, it was just hard it. to watch I because know. they weren't. It was the problem I had is that they had they have these playmakers that they got in the top 10 <laughs> the past two years. Yeah. And they're not getting them the ball like they're getting like right. Demarius Bird or whoever, you know. Yeah. The, all yeah. these targets. <laughs> and it just doesn't make it just d- doesn't make sense to me. I'm with you. I'm with you. I do believe better days are ahead for whatever reason. They did not trust. And the biggest thing. I don't know. I don't know what it was. One thing that I was thinking of, you know, that the reason why they were doing this last year. Honestly, I think that they could be trying to minimize injuries as much as possible yeah. by running the ball as much as they did. Okay. Yeah. You're, you're, you're burying Cordero Sh- Patterson. Caleb the game. Yeah, yeah. But you, sh- you exactly. You shorten the game shorten the drastically. Game. Yep. They played the, sh- the fewest amount of real life minutes. You know, they all played 60 minutes, right? But they played the fewest, the, the shortest games every single week last year of mm. all the teams. So you know, and they were fairly successful doing it. So I, that's I just because their defense was trash. I know, though, I know, I know. That's why they did <laughs> I that. Know. You know, I know. But no, I mean, I'm with that's you. Just Kyle a Pitts of a bad team, but still. yep. Still, Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off before. Go into oh, why you good. love Kyle it's Pitts again. Um, Give us your reasons. Yeah, uh, Kyle Pitts. He is too big, too talented. He is too too much everything else to not be successful. Mm-hmm. And with him, I think he's going to be 23 this coming year or he's 20 he's very no, young he's very he's young. 22 he is 22 so i am excited for him he has many many years to be successful mm-hmm. and i think i think he will be um I, I i just think the injury was was fluky and all that so oh, i'm not sure. too worried about it for yeah sure. i'm not too worried about it and plus i feel they they really shut him down you know, t- towards the end of the year, to not have that injury risk and stuff mm-hmm. like that, because it was it was pointless for him to play because they were out of out of playoff contention and right, and they were just trying trying to trying to go for the highest pick. They so, you know, I'm I'm very excited for Kyle Pitts. I think he's going to be probably my number one in dynasty tight ends probably for the next five six years probably. Yeah, we'll see when Brock Bowers gets out here. That's going to That's, <laughs> that's, that's going to compete with that's it. But true. no, Kyle Pitts is a freak. Um he's my number 2 tight end and we'll talk about my number 1 here in one second, but you know, it, it, we are such a recency bias we are. society, right? And it's crazy to me because you know, you go back to his rookie year where no tight ends ever produce, right? And he has 110 targets in that rookie year. 1000 yards one touchdown that year. Last year he had 60 targets through 10 games, which is, you know, about a, about the same pace, but still not that great. And the the difference was Marcus Mariota versus Matt Ryan. Now Matt Ryan was not good as we all saw last year. It was pretty but bad. You get a competent quarterback in this team and Kyle Pitts is going to eat, you know. He's going to eat. I don't think the game plan was to take him out of the equation completely. So there is that piece of it, and I just think that there are better days ahead for Kyle Pitts. Worst case scenario, in three years, he's going to be a free agent, and then he's going to go anywhere that he wants to, and at that time, he'll only be 25 years old. So there are better days ahead. You can't have a size freak like Kyle Pitts, and yeah, yeah, you you just got to buy into those elite, you know, especially at a position where it's kind of rough out there. You just got to buy into those elite measurables and – when it hits, it'll hit. We'll see on Thursday if the Falcons end up going quarterback. I doubt it's it. Gonna, it's it, it, it's it's gonna, if 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 Stroud certain fall, players man. fall. Yes, yeah. that, that's who I was gonna say. If Stroud falls to them, I think they'll take him. But that's a story for a different show. <laughs> yep. So we will we will recap if you know. I'll, I'll talk on Friday yes. with the first round recap with all those quarterbacks because it's going to be mostly quarterbacks. I have a feeling on Friday, It'll but we'll, we'll talk about the teams and the impacts of that. So my number one guy is actually going to be Mark Andrews with the Baltimore Ravens. 
And the reason why, you know, he's a little bit older, but the reason why he's my number one buy right now, he's 27. He's not that old for a tight end. They can easily play into their, you know, 33, 35 age season. I mean, look at, you know, my number three guy, quick spoiler there, it's going to be Travis Kelsey. He's 33 right now, and he's still playing like a monster. Mark Andrews is 27, so let's say you get another four or five years of elite Mark Andrews before he even starts to take a step back. The dude is a stud. Like, he's not the same type of tight end as Travis Kelsey. That's fair, and nobody kind of expects that out of him. But Mark Andrews on the field is the production king out of him and Kyle Pitts, right? And, you know, the only reason why I don't have Travis Kelsey up here is because of the fact that he's 33 years old. Eventually, he is going to age out. It just happens to everybody. You know, he's not as quick and as athletic as he used to be. Still very good, don't get me wrong, but he's just not the same level. Now, Mark Andrews, I think that he's very explosive. He's in the prime of his career. And he's with the Baltimore Ravens. They signed him to a long-term contract, if I remember right. So last year they signed him. They would have had to have. Um, and the fact that this team is hurting for wide receiver. You know, they bring in Odell Beckham Jr., which is great. Still have Rashad Bateman. We'll see if they end up going to anybody in this year's draft in the first round. But I think the number one target for Mark Andrews, is, or for the Ravens, is going to be Mark Andrews. And you look, they brought in Todd Monken from Georgia. And who did Georgia have? Brock Bowers, who we all love. So you know Georgia knows, you know he knows how to scheme open a tight end. So I think that the the offense is still going to flow through Mark Andrews, Lamar Jackson or not. You know, if they don't have Lamar Jackson long term, they end up trading him, whatever. They're going to have somebody to replace him and they are going to utilize Mark Andrews. And I think that the production is going to continue that's why he's my number one dynasty tight end right now. Yeah, and I I fully get that. Um, I actually have Mark Andrews at number four, which is probably a very a very uh, hot take for you, especially. I mean, I I I I I I do love Mark Andrews. I I get all of what you said, but I think the I think the two guys I have in front of them, I just like more, and I feel they're going to be very much more consistent. Sure. Um, I, I think I'm, I'm a little bit worried about Andrew's Andrew's uh, injury history that he's had, and with them changing the offense, you know, I can still see him being a big part, but it's going to be interesting how much, how big of a part. It's, it's with Todd Monken. I mean, they are going to open up open it up more. They are going to take somebody else in the draft, and it's I'm I'm not sure. Where the Ray, where the Ravens really stand right now with quarterback, so you know I'm, I mean I, I'll, I'll probably change these again before the beginning of the season, but you know yeah. as of right now, you know I, I honestly think Tyler Huntley might be throwing to Mark Andrews, and that like it worries me a little bit with how 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 good the offense is. Yeah, we will see. We will see. So, who is your number two guy then? All right, so my guy at number two is Travis Kelsey. I, I know he's 33 years old. I know he's he is far past his prime. I get all those things, but this man produces and produces and produces and will continue to produce until Zeus himself does not want to play football. You know, um, I, 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 don't, I don't really understand why he keeps doing what he does. Um, but it's probably because he has Patrick Mahomes and he gets like probably a hundred, hundred something plus targets every year. <laughs> Last yeah, year. <laughs> it's, it's astronomical Yeah, and, it, and it's all the time every year. You no, know, I mean, I mean the only year in the, what the past six years, he hasn't been a tight end one. He was a tight end two. Yeah. So I'm not worried about it at all. I still think he's going to, Still think they're going to run it back. I think they're going to be very competitive again, and they don't really have anybody else to soak up the targets like, like he does. Like he had. I mean, I mean, I mean. Last year he had 152. He had 134 and 145. Yep. Past three years in targets, and he's going to do that again, and then he'll probably do that for another year. So, you know, I I do see his dynasty value is not as great as Mark Andrews, but. 
I would much rather have Travis Kelsey because I know what I'm going to get week yeah. in and week out, and it's yep. going to be it's going to be fantastic every time. Yeah, and I I agree with you. He's still going to be great, um, especially yeah. this year. But again, he's not what he once was, and as soon as this team gets. I think that the Kansas City Chiefs, and this is one of my only concerns about Travis Kelsey, I do believe that the Chiefs are trying to get playmakers at the other positions. They've been trying to weave around Patrick Mahomes' salary cap hits for the last couple years. Now that everybody's kind of in the same price range as Patrick Mahomes and he's not the top end anymore and the salary cap has grown as much as it has, I do believe that there's a lot more money on the table there that they've that they're you know they're they're out from the Frank Clark deal as well. So I think more money is coming to this team in the next couple of years, especially this season. And you know, you saw with Sky Moore in the second round last year. They're trying to find a guy. They traded for Kadarius Tony. Tony has no hamstrings that can keep him on the field, right? But yeah. and Sky Moore just wasn't what they expected. MVS was a, was a cut candidate by a lot of people because he just cannot catch the ball. Juju was solid, but he's gone now, he's a, right? Yeah. Yep. Like Juju wasn't a superstar, but he was very solid. He, if, if man, imagine the team if they had Tyreek with Juju on that. Oh, it would have been crazy. But I do believe yeah. that they're trying to find that reliable wide receiver on the outside that gives them, you know, like a Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson type of player. Mm-hmm. They're not going to get those guys because really? those guys are one of a kind, right? But I think they're trying to get something like that. And, of course, they had Tyree Kill, but they just could not afford all the contracts that they had to keep Tyreek. It's just the reality of the situation. So they're going to try and find it, whether it's with one guy or three. Now, when it's three guys, that's where it hurt or it helps Travis Kelsey because he's the most reliable out of all of them, right? right. But if they can get right. that other guy or the two other guys, or if they can get a running game going that actually works and mm-hmm. it's not terrible with Clyde, it, I think that this team could very easily shift away from Travis Kelsey being the, the number one option. But I could be wrong, and I do love him still. I do believe he's going to be a stud, at least for this year. But I think long-term, I think he's running out of time. I think after this yeah. year, he's a free agent as well. You know, his, his contract kind of runs out. And at that point, right. you know, 34, 35-year-old Travis Kelsey, what are you going to want to pay him in regards right. to what his production is, right? So. Right. that's the only questions that I have right now, but the dude is still very good. He's with the chiefs and he's got Patrick Mahomes as his quarterback. So you can't complain. That's why he's my three year it's, two. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like what you see there, who's your number three then? And then we'll, I think we'll be caught up. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. So at three, I have TJ Hawkinson. I am in love with TJ Hawkinson for some reason. Um, I really love that. I really love that Minnesota traded for him. Um, and then and then that gave them another option other than Justin Jefferson all the time. Mm-hmm. And and I feel that and I really feel that he's gonna be Kirk Cousins safety valve. If yeah. if if he starts to get in trouble, he can just dump it off to TJ and he's gonna get, you know, eight, nine yards every time and it's gonna be consistent. Uh so I think the in the season he was he was on a tear for a, it was for a little bit. He was doing good. Oh, he was cooking. I mean, yeah. there was a game where against the Giants, he had sixteen targets, yeah, twelve it, targets it was just, against Green Bay. It was just nine, nuts. eight, eight. It was just nuts. I mean, I mean, it's 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 very consistent. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's overall. the biggest thing. Yep. Yeah, it's 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 yep. consistent targets compared to when he was it, it's when he was in Detroit, he wasn't getting a lot of. A lot of these big consistent target games. Right. Yeah, you can see the to start the season with Detroit four, three, three, eight catches against Seattle and where he had twelve targets, right? Um and I think everyone got injured in that game, if I remember right. Um then New England four and one, um, Dallas four, and then I think he got traded right around here. So right. you know, it was it was definitely two different seasons for him last year. And I'm with you. I I have TJ Hawkinson as my number five. And I do love the consistency that he's going to give you. The only thing I will say is I don't think he's the best. He's not the best for for big plays, right? Like he's very efficient after the ball is in his hands. But with Kirk Cousins, you know he's going to go to him in the red zone. He loves targeting those guys. He's also going to be a safety valve like you talked about as well. 
and that gives him a very high floor. And for fantasy football with these tight ends, that is literally all you could ask for, all right? You have. Yes, um, yes, 100%. But, you know, I just don't think he has those weak winning performances, really. I know he's got a couple. When you get 16 right. targets, yes, you're going to probably have a weak winning performance there. But all the rest of the weeks, you know, 11, 15, 11, 16, 11, you know, 7, 11. And so he was just very, very consistent the rest of the time, except for the one 36 point game. And I do believe he has a very high floor, a little bit of a lower ceiling. That's why he's my number five. And I will be interested to see what happens when they replace Adam Thielen with a wide receiver this year because, you know, Adam Thielen was definitely burnt toast at this point in his career. Oh, he was. So. 100%. What's going to happen when they get some younger? Everyone kind of has them on Jordan Addison in the upcoming draft, which would be interesting. Um, he's smaller, but I, I I I get that, but I think they have a lot bigger needs. I agree. I, think KG, I agree. I I I I I feel KJ Os but uh, KJ Osborne is is a solid number three, sure. target. Sure, but here's the thing, offense. right? Here's the thing. This team, I don't know if one player fixes the defense. So if you're looking at it. The offensive True. side of the ball, one wide receiver makes this a ma- makes a massive difference on this that's offense. Scary. You know what I mean? So that's that's all I'm thinking. We'll see on Thursday yep. how it actually shakes out, but I just think that one good wide receiver can really make this an elite offense and, you know, maybe they tack some things together and hold the defense together by silly tape at the end of the year, but um, I just don't think one defensive player is going to fix that entire defense. That's my only thoughts. We'll see if they agree with me or not, but you know, I, I'm just interested to see what ultimately happens there in the draft. You know, maybe they had nobody, and T.J. Hawkinson gets a lot higher of a ceiling because of the the much higher floor. Right? It's going to raise his floor even higher. So, I like T.J. Hawkinson. He's my number five. My number four, though, is going to be George Kittle. And I think that George Kittle, you know, he's still in the prime of his career. Everyone Mm. looks at last year and, oh, he, you know, he missed. Everyone has a very bad taste in their mouth because he started the year last year terribly. It was an awful start to the season. He missed the first two weeks of the season. Then he was bad the next two weeks after that. Really didn't get him involved much. And then after Jimmy Garoppolo got injured, Ooh, baby, man, it was uh, guns blazing for him at the end of the year. And him and Brock Purdy, like he was Brock Purdy's favorite target. And, you know, it helps when you you cap off the last four games of the season with seven touchdowns. Like it was Mm -hmm. nuts. But, you know, he's a very good player. He's more boomer bust than any of the guys we've talked about so far, except for maybe Kyle Pitts, right? But Kyle Pitts is 22 Mm -hmm. years old. George Kittle is 29 years old. But, man, when he goes off, dude, he will win you a week. And, you know, when he he gets 25, 31, 19, 25, um, 21, like he was extremely boom. But then the rest of the week's five, four, six, four, six, seven. So it's like, you know, you, you take it or you leave it with, with George Kittle. And that's kind of up to Kyle Shanahan a little bit because the game plan will be, you know, whatever we can do to win that week. But I think that I do believe that Trey Lance is gone out of San Francisco, Sam Darnold or Brock Purdy, whoever's the starter for the time being. And then if they bring in Tom Brady, my, my galaxy brain thought right now is that, you know, Tom Brady's retired, Sam Darnold and Brock Purdy are going to be the starters. And if ultimately, you know, they have a string of bad luck like they did last year, Tom Brady's retired. He's going to stay in shape, and maybe he comes off the bench and, and comes in in week 10 and just rides this out and sees how far they can go in the playoffs, right? It's very possible, yeah. It, this is Galaxy Brain, only if he's needed kind of thing, right? And I think that they're going to yep. trade Trey Lance to whoever the highest bidder is that they can get this Thursday. So we'll see, but you know, I just think that Trey Lance is gone. You know, George Kittle hasn't been the biggest advocate for Trey Lance anyway in the locker room. So that's absolutely true. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think Brock Purdy or Sam Darnold love to target George Kittle. Sam Darnold, go back to all his career. He's loved to target the tight end position. 
So I think that George Kittle will have those boomer bust days regardless of who the quarterback is. Even Trey Lance, we just don't know what these two, I mean, the two games that Trey Lance played, George Kittle was injured. So we don't even know what the targets would look like between these two guys, right, when they're on the field together. So I, I do like George Kittle. I think he has a higher ceiling than Hawkinson, which is why I have him one spot of, ahead of him. What are your thoughts on Kittle? Yeah, no, I, I fully get that. And really the reason I had Hawkinson above Kittle it, well, a couple spots higher was it, it was because of his age. You know, it's it's comparatively, um, and you know, I I do a hundred percent agree with what you said that 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 for Kittle he's more boom or bust, and 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 that's really how he's always been, and that's where it can be really frightening because he can have these fantastic weeks mm-hmm. where you know he's scoring you know thirty forty points, and then other and then and then the next week he gets three points, and you're <laughs> right. like, well. You know, you know, it's like, well, crap at that point. So, you know, I, I kind of think we're getting to the tight end territory now where a lot of these guys are boomer bust and it's kind of ranking them if they're really, really boomer bust or if they're kind of meh, boomer bust, you know, on those games. So, yep. you know, I, I love George Kittle. I think he's fantastic yep. for the Kyle Shanahan offense. And I think if San Francisco goes with Brock Purdy, I'll be very, very happy because that's what's going to elevate Kittle. But if it's Trey Lance, I think Lance will run more and that will take away some some targets for Kittle. Yep, so we will see. I, I'm with you 100%. So, yeah, at this point, it's kind of uh, what, what pick your poison. So where did you have Kittle ranked? Right. Uh, I have him ranked fifth. Okay, so we are now officially our top five. We're through our top five. Who's your number six then? Uh, mine is Dallas Goddard. Okay, all right. So I I I really like Dallas Goddard. Uh, Goddard, you know, I I think he's very solid with um Jalen Hurts. Um, even with having being, you know, it's um it's it's the likes of AJ Brown yep. who is a is a target monster. Same with uh, same with Devonta Smith. Right. You know, um, I but the biggest thing with Dallas Goddard is in. Man can't stay injured or stay healthy. Yeah, he's missed so, multiple and, games the last couple of years. But yes. the good news is when he played, he was very, very good. Oh, it's it's it's, it's great. It's great. But you know, it's it's a concerning thing is is that he's never he's only played one full season. Mm-hmm. That was his rookie year, and he's never gone over a thousand yards. And the most touchdowns he's had is five. So, and yeah. I think that was a Carson Wentz year. So. Yep. That's a little concerning, and with with there have well, so 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 there has been some rumors of the Eagles picking JSN at ten. So if we'll the Eagles at J, that's if, the if dumbest the had, thing I've ever heard. But it yeah, would be but... really dumb. But I've been hearing a lot of rumors here in the past couple of days, sure. um, whether it's true or not. But um, you know, he, it, it's 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 despite that, you know, he's I'm, I'm a little worried about that. Because his highest finished has been has been tenth. Yep. And, and and we're a little worried about that. Um, it's kind of going forward. You know, he's twenty eight now, and I wouldn't be shocked if they try to draft another tight end to kind of to kind of replace him. You know, e- e- eventually, like they don't have that guy on the roster now. So sure. it, it's it's going to be interesting what they do in the draft. Yeah. So. I have Goddard six as well. Um, I still have him in the tier of the guys that we've been talking about. You know, I think that he does have a very high floor. You can see if you're watching on YouTube, all the games that he played, he did miss five games right in the middle of the season this last year. But pretty much every other game, he was double digits. Um, You know, not not win you the week type of guy. But again, TJ Hawkinson light, right? It's solid. Yeah. And I do remember there was multiple games, I think it was last year, where they had touchdowns called back on holding penalties on him. And it's like he would have had, I think, around six touchdowns if those penalties hadn't happened on on literally plays where he scored a touchdown. So um, very unfortunate there. But, yeah, the the thing with Dallas Goddard, again, I'm with you. Um, I think that injuries are a little bit of a concern. But I think his last year was kind of a freak incident, right? It was a, a shoulder 
um, shoulder injury, right? The AC joint or something like that, which is kind of a freak one. You know, I don't think it's something that's plagued him continuously. It's all, they're always injury prone until they're not. And I don't think anything that he's had so far is indicative of future concern. You know, it's all just kind of random things, you know? So we'll see if he can, he can finally put together a full season, but, and he was tearing it up this last year and that's with AJ Brown and Devonta Smith in the first year of a new, uh, second year of a new system. I guess first year with AJ Brown in the mix as well. Right. So, um, I think that there's some potential there. You know, I just don't think that there's that high of a ceiling with Dallas Goddard. And this is the, again to the point where give me the floor where I I'm not going to get completely burned by the tight end position. Um, but I think that. Yeah, his ceiling is very limited. We'll see. Maybe he's he's being overranked a little bit as I start to think through this a little bit more. Um, and maybe I'd prefer to have my number seven guy a little bit more than him just for the ceiling factor. But my number seven is going to be Darren Waller. Now, Darren Waller was banged up last year. Let's, let's put it that way. Um, but man alive, that guy, when he's on the field, dude, he gets targeted. And... It's kind of funny, you know, everyone says, oh, well, he was, he was really injured last year, but all the stories and rumors after he uh, got traded to the the Giants was him and, um, oh, who's the head coach there? Um, uh, McDaniels. Um, they did not like each other at all whatsoever yeah. they got darren weller got married and they didn't even invite him to the wedding so right right it's like it's like all right yep sounds good so there's definitely some bad blood there now we're two years removed from darren waller's peak year and that's with john gruden but i will say when you look at this transaction they gave up a third round pick for darren waller which is a big commitment for a 30 year old tight end right he is by far the largest and probably best patch, pass catcher on this offense right now. Now, everyone has right them now. taking another wide receiver in the first round or trading for like a Jerry Judy or Brandon Ayuk or something like that. I think they ultimately do that as well. But, you know, looking at the roster right now, Darius Slayton, Paris Campbell, Isaiah Hodginson, um, Sterling Shepard, Wandale Robinson, Jameson Crowder, David Sills, these are all the other pass catchers on this team. None of mm-hmm. them have size. They're all slot wide receivers, all of them. So except for Darius Slayton, he's a little bit of an outside guy. Darren Waller is going to come in here and he's going to eat in this offense. I do think that this offense is a good system. The only question is, can can uh, Daniel Jones do it? And we don't know. No. That's the question. We don't know. Dan- Daniel Jones has never had a competent receiving core in his entire career. And, you know, you build that around him. Maybe it could be Josh Allen. It really could. I know it's easy to hate on Daniel Jones, and I'm I'm not the biggest fan of Daniel Jones, but we just don't know that side of his of his game yet, and whether he can support multiple wide receivers, tight ends, like pass catching options on this team. So, you know, I'm going to bet on it because Darren Waller, I still believe, has a pretty good ceiling, but I do believe that the injuries have shown he has almost no floor. The last couple years combined yeah. he's just he's missed a lot of time over the last two years so you know you gotta you gotta either you gotta make a decision on darren waller are you willing to buy in and say and you know two years ago that's what darren waller is 146 targets 107 catches very reliable hands or is he what we saw the last couple of seasons where he's banged up a lot so it's up to you to decide but I'm still betting on the talent. You can't do that in back-to-back seasons and not be a good player. I just think that there's been a lot of turmoil the last couple of years in Vegas, and Darren Waller's kind of been the reciprocant of it. What are your thoughts on Waller? Yeah, I see that. You know, I get why you would put him at seven. Um, I I actually have him at eleven. This is where I have him. Um, okay. The in, the injuries worry me, worry me, worry, and. I understand that, you know, like Josh McDaniels did not like Darren Waller, and it, I think the feelings are mutual, obviously. And I don't really see him getting the 146 targets that he got with Derek Carr in his in the 2020 season. You know, I don't really 
see him doing that. You know, mm-hmm. I can see him having a, a solid year this year, but potentially, but that's if he stays healthy. Sure. And, you know, um, I think they're going to do a lot of dink and dunk kind of stuff. Like they're going to try to control Daniel Jones as much as possible. And that is really where Darren Waller will shine, mm-hmm. but he has to stay on the field. And last couple of years, he has, he just hasn't done that. You know, it's, it's, it's when he is on the field, he, he, he's, He's fairly consistent, I'll be very honest. And he probably will be either the one or two first or second read in 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 a in a passing in, in, on a passing uh down. Yep. So I'm with you. So like, you know, that's gonna help him. But I I just I can't trust him long term. I can't even really trust him this year until I can see him, you know, having, you know, like a good eight game stint of being healthy before he gets hurt. Sure. All right, so who's your number seven then? Um, uh, so at seven, I actually have David and Joku, which I feel a lot of people can have the same argument with. Um, sure. With, uh, with, with Darren Waller, to be honest. So um, so last year, like in, I think in Deshaun Watson, it was, it was in Joku and Waller's first game together, or not Waller, and... Watson. Joku and Wat- Watson, thank you. Um, and, and like his first game together that, that they played was against the Bengals. And he, you know, he, he had a very solid game. I think he had two of his four touchdowns in, in, in those weeks. One touchdown that um, week, but yeah. Yep. Well, well, and it, it's for the rest of the season. Oh yeah. But, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Gotcha. Um, but you know, o- overall, like it was, it was pretty decent over, you know, overall. And, and then like, even, even when he played with Jacoby Brissett, he was still having a fairly yeah, solid he was year. Solid he was, under Jacoby. He was he was extremely uh, solid. So so you know not I, solid I think under Watson. <laughs> no one was good with yeah, Watson. Really, it, it was yeah yeah it was really really shaky because Watson was rusty. Yep. And and I think a lot of that's going to work itself out over. Yeah yeah it, it's it's going to work itself out over over this off season. You know like with him and Amari Cooper. And they're probably, and I can honestly see them bringing somebody in in A2. I think they have well, they got Elijah Moore, right? And then DPJ. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. And, and this Elijah offense Moore. is decent, you know, it's definitely decent. Um, yeah, it, 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 it is not bad looking. And I think with some of their potential offensive line troubles that they're probably going to have, because it mm-hmm. seemed like, like whoever, like I think Conklin got injured quite a bit and, and these other players got hurt. So, you know, I really think David and Juke in I really think David and Joku is gonna be a benefit of some of those things. And I think he's gonna have a fairly a fairly good season. You know, it's not gonna be super great by fantasy standards, but by tight end standards, I think it's gonna be a solid solid wide receiver one or tight end one season. Yeah, so they don't have a pick until this the third round, pick number seventy four, which is yeah. interesting. But I was gonna say if they had a second rounder, they could definitely target, um, you know, offensive linemen there because yeah, they are going to be quite that's quite a, nice. That's but, a need. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, so yeah, I I do agree. I think that there's some potential with David and Joku, but I'm just basing it off of you know he did most of his work with, and, and I honestly, um, full transparency, don't have David and Joku in my top twelve, and the full reason is because. He did all of his work with with um, Jacoby Brissett, and you look at what he was on pace for. Yes, he had he had two touchdowns with with Deshaun Watson. That's not really that great when you add in the yardage of he had about 150 yards. Not spectacular, um, and and that's in five games. So averaging about 30 yards a game. You don't love to see that. He averaged about four catches, three to four catches a game. You don't love to see that. I think I'd say about three and a half. So that's not great statistics for a top 12, and I just don't think he's going to finish there. Um, I just don't know if he's part of the game plan long term. We'll see. I could be wrong, but I don't know. I just (laughs) – the injuries of David Njoku, the lack of production – for most of his career, I've just been burned too many times. So I'm, but I'll let you prove it on the field. He's still young. He's only 26 oh. years old. But yeah, I'm just. It's, 
And, and, and it's crazy to think that he's only 26 because oh, man. he's been in the league six years. I know. He came out so and, 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 He was and, basically and, Kyle Pitts, right? Like size, speed, and everything. But, um, yeah, it's crazy. So my number eight guy, and maybe we're lined up here. I don't actually know. But my number eight guy is going to be Evan Ingram with the Jaguars. Now, Evan Ingram, 28 years old, six foot three, 240 monster season in the back half of last year and you know the jacksonville jaguars signed him to a one-year contract i believe um they're trying to get him to a long-term uh oh they franchise tagged him that's right so they're trying to get him to a a long-term contract before that that deadline of training camp or whenever it is later this offseason but last year man he started off slow you know if you're watching on youtube Four targets, eight targets against Indy. Um, you love to see that, but only 46 yards, three, one, 10 against Houston. Really started to show a little bit more there. And then the back half, man, he was just, they were using him in the back half of the season. And then in the playoffs, he was kind of, uh, him and Trevor Lawrence had a real connection work in there. And if you know anything about Doug Peterson, dude likes his tight ends. And there are no real options at tight end other than Evan Ingram. Now, a lot of people have talked about, you know, Dalton Kincaid, Michael Mayer, uh, Darnell Washington, or somebody like that in the first round to the Jaguars. I don't see it personally. I think that, Neither. you know, don't you don't franchise tag Evan Ingram if you're going to gonna try and get a tight end in the first round of the NFL draft. That just doesn't happen, right? Um, or at least you, you franchise tag him and you don't try and work him on, into a long-term contract like – the GM has said he's trying to do, right? So I think they're ultimately trying to make Evan Ingram a centerpiece of this offense. Now, this offense is good. Don't get me wrong. It's got Christian Kirk, Calvin Ridley, Zay Jones. It's not really hurting. They could use a maybe one other wide receiver, a wide receiver three. But Travis Etienne, he can catch the ball as well. Jamichael Hasty, Dearness Johnson at running back. You know, maybe they bring in some other guy at running back, like a Zach Charbonnet. Zach Charbonnet on this offense would be disgusting, by the way. Um, but, you know, they, they really don't need many other pass catchers. Is that mean Evan Ingram's going to be otherworldly and safe? No. That's why he's number eight for me. I think his floor can be very bad. You know, there's a game where he had 1.4 points, 14 points, 40 points. It's like he's very up and down, but and it's going to come and go as the team – Comes and goes, right? But I do think that they figured something out after the bye. He had four weeks out of five right after the bye where he was just cooking. And um, his lowest points in those was the 1.4, but then his second lowest points was 14 points. So he has a very good ceiling when it's clicking with Evan Ingram. It's always been this way in his career. When he's on, he's on, man. But when he's off, he's off. So it's kind of like all right. tight ends. I like this offense a lot. I like the coaching staff. They know how to utilize tight ends. So I like Evan Ingram quite a bit and a little bit more than some of the other guys out there. I trust this offense more than some of those other guys. So what are your thoughts on Evan Ingram? Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree with all of what you said. Like I have him at number nine, which okay. is, you know, it, it, which is fairly close in our, in, in, well, in, in, in our rankings. So um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's the bigger thing with him. Like, as long as he's on a one-term deal, I think he's going to do fantastic. But I think once you get a deal in place personally, like, it seems like he just kind of crumbles, which is, <laughs> it is true. In, in, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a very lazy analysis. I, I agree, but you know, <laughs> it, 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 it is true. So I, I, I think the biggest thing with him is going to be the addition of Calvin Ridley it's and how much of that's going to be very interesting. So, you know, I, I kind of think that's going to take away from all of those guys that you mentioned. Yes, it's going to take away from Ingram. It's going to take away from Zay Jones. It's going to take away from Kirk. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting how much those targets go to Calvin Ridley. And sure. I, think, I think it's going to be quite a bit, unfortunately. I do believe it's going to eat up some of his targets, but I think it's going to open him up for more of the down the field work, which he's a very good athlete and that's always what he's been, right? So if he's getting a few more deep shots versus playing more slot work, which is kind of what they used him for in a lot of these games, that could be really good for him where he's not being targeted super, super close to the line of scrimmage. I mean, 
He's getting targeted on an average of 7.8, which is terrible. That's terrible. That means it's he's not working down the field at all. If Calvin right. Ridley comes in here and opens him up for more deep shots, I like that a lot for this offense. Yes, it's going to hurt his target numbers, but I think his yardage could go up quite heavily in that 100%. regard. So, you know, it's a well, little bit I, of a trade off, but I'm I'm with you. There's we don't know how this offense is going to going to work with Ridley in the mix. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's yeah, it's going to be interesting with the Jags and and I like to pick players that are in good offenses and I think Ingram is on a is on a improving offense, which is really good for him. All right, so who's your number eight then? Um, so my number eight is is Pat Fryermuth. Okay, and it's and, and the only and I feel the only reason I I I had I had Fryermuth ahead of Ingram is because of his age. Uh, I think Fryermuth <laughs> is he's he's twenty four, and and like he himself is, is is a physical freak, like most of these tight ends that we see. Yep. And um, I'm not super excited about Pittsburgh's offense. I'm nope. actually very disappointed that they brought back my, Matt Canada. Yep. Like they kind of brought it back another year of mediocre offense. And with Kenny Pickett, um, I think I really think Kenny Pickett loved Pat Fryermuth, but like, well, like he had 98 targets, which is great. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, not only about 70 percent of those were catchable, if that. Right. So. So, you know, that that's going to be the thing. And, um, you know, it's with that, I don't really think a lot of those targets are going to go away compared to Evan Ingram. I feel the addition of Calvin Ridley is going to take away some of those, uh, s- s- some of those targets. So, you know, I, 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 I really feel that he's going to have a very, a very good role in this offense. You know, I, I don't really see Allen Robinson taking a lot of targets from him. No, no, no. By, 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 by any means. And, you know, the only person that I think would take away targets would be uh, George Pickens, but that's because he's playing more. He's just, sure, you know, like he, he, he's, he's just becoming more part of the offense and I don't foresee that as a bad thing. <clears throat> yeah. And I think, so it's funny. I have Brian Muth as my number nine. So we just have these guys flip flopped in our rankings here, but no, I, I, I do think that there's something there. Um, <sighs> the question is going to be, Pittsburgh has always kind of utilized the tight end position, so I'm not too worried about that whatsoever. Um, I just don't really see him having a high ceiling, and that's kind of the problem with with Friar Muth. You know, his highest point game last year was 15, 16 points, so, you know, there's really no ceiling, but he was fairly consistent with, with yep. some of it. And that's, again, this is to the point where if you can have a consistent, like, you know, close to 10 points every single week, not the end of the That's world. Great. It's not. It's not elite, but it's not terrible, right? And um, you know that's why Travis Kelsey is the number three, number two tight end because he's giving you twenty five points a week, but you got to pay out the nose for him, right? So, Friermuth is somebody that's not going to kill you, but he's not going to save you at the same time. Now, the one thing I will say, and just quickly, we'll before we rattle off the last couple guys here, but. You know, Allen Robinson, I still think he's got a lot left. Did you see his little video that he did? I, you know, he never had time to I, practice with Matt Stafford the entire training camp. I just think that uh, him and Stafford never had a chance to. I don't care. I do yeah, not want Allen Alan Robinson on my on my squad. I don't think he's worth anything. I think that's He's not why. worth anything. I will agree he's, there. He's, but he, he is, yeah, he's not worth anything He's worth the me. seven. I don't want. <laughs> yes, bar- barely that. Yeah. Like the. Rams were trying to pay people to yeah yeah so, yeah so no so, we'll see I'm I'm telling you man I think Allen Robinson has a little bit left in the tank but I'll save that for another video um no so I'm with you on Pat Fryermuth he's only 24 years old he's only got two years and again these guys sometimes take a little bit of time to to break out if it wasn't for Kyle Pitts Pat Fryermuth would have been the number one tight end in that draft class and you know pretty clearly so. Um, there's a lot of potential there with Fryermuth, and we'll see how he kind of grows into it. Um, so my number 10 guy is going to be Hunter Henry. Um, and I know this is kind of easy to hate on, but Hunter Henry, uh. man, <laughs> dude, we can't live in recency bias. Last year was a bad year. I'm not denying that. But we also had two dip, dumb, I'm trying not to cuss <laughs> here. You know, we right. had two morons running our offense, right? Where we had a That's defensive true. coordinator and a, a special teams coach running our offense. We have an actual 
offense now. Bill O'Brien, one, loves the tight end position. Yes, they brought in Mike Gusecki. I don't really care. They play different positions. Like, Mike Gusecki is more of a an outside wide receiver than he is a tight end. Hunter Henry is the traditional Gronk tight end, and I get it. He's not Gronk, but Mike Gusecki is more of the um, Aaron, who was the, uh, Hernandez? Yeah, Aaron Hernandez yeah. Uh, tight end for this team where he's going to be the athletic guy on the outside. That's what they play, and that's fine. I think that the offense that the Patriots have, yes, they're looking at Zay Flowers, and probably we're going to take the wrong wide receiver in the first round. That's fine. I'm, I've prepared myself mentally for it. But there's a, a big lack of weapons on this team, and I do think that Hunter Henry and Mac Jones have a very good rapport when they're not you know, being directed by morons on the offensive side of the ball. So... I think that there's a lot of potential there. And, you know, just two seasons ago, Mac Jones' rookie year, Hunter Henry was a top 10 tight end, and he was very good. He had nine touchdowns that year. You know, a little bit more targets, a few more catches, not not amazing. He's not someone who's going to get 1,000 yards. But I do believe that he has a lot of potential in the end zone, which is where Bill O'Brien loves to target the tight ends and where Hunter Henry thrives is in the red zone. And, you know, he does have that rapport with Mac Jones. So I think Hunter Henry has the potential to jump back up here to a top 12 guy. Um, and again, we're just kind of betting on on nothing. Hunter Henry's shown the flashes multiple times. You know, before last season, he was the tight end 10, 13, and 9. So he's been a top 12 guy you know, two of the last four years, two of the last three, if you take it out last year, right? So um, I think that we're we're living in too much recency bias. There, this offense, yes, they brought in Juju Smith-Schuster, but they still have Devonta Parker, Kendrick Bourne, Tyquan Thornton, um, Ramondre Stevenson, Mike Gusecki. It's not a great offense on, on the paper. Hunter Henry is one of the best catchers, pass catchers on this team. So I do think that there's a lot of potential there. You can give your quick quick spiel and then you can give your next guy yeah for hunter henry um i get it i get what you're saying i just not a big fan i'm not a big patriots fan which that doesn't help either you know i i I see the talent but i i have to see i have to see this offense go before i get excited about Hunter. they were a dumpster fire last year you know they brought in bill o'brien but it's gonna take a little bit for him to offense Mm-hmm. And it's going to be interesting in New England this year. So, yep, I'm with you. Um, All right, so your next guy? Yeah, so at number 10, I have Greg Dulcich. Okay. And with him, uh, like he's a second year player, and I think he he has a lot of upside. Um, you know, it, it's, it, it's, it's compared to some of these guys that we've seen that know are 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 these staples like with with uh greg dulcich like he was kind of the kind of the dynasty darling i kind of felt it kind of felt in in a lot of drafts like he fell quite a bit in uh fantasy drafts yep and and overall like he's he's been solid you know he he was charted behind um albert guam last name yep yep um and unfortunately i had albert o 12th in last year's uh, tried to dynasty win tight end tried so so i know i know <laughs> i know and I, I i think greg dulcich is a lot better oh yeah for sure yeah yeah he he's a lot better and i i honestly foresee one of these wide receivers leaving you know Maybe it's either both be of them. Sutton. <laughs> yeah yeah it's either gonna be Cortland sutton or jerry judy mm-hmm. and then fire up tim patrick for me i'm really excited yeah then you got greg dulcich and i think that's gonna be great uh because I think Russell Wilson is going to be better or yeah, he's going to, he has to be better. He has to be. I'm with you. You know, he, 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 you know, you know, like personally, like he was a flaming dumpster last year. And I feel a lot of it was coaching. A lot of it was him trying to be Mr. Unlimited. And we saw how that worked. Yeah. So, you know, I I think this offense as a whole is going to be a lot better. And I think Greg Dulcich is going to be part of it. Yeah, we will see. So the only reason I didn't have him top 12 is just because, you know, I like the potential there. But all new system, he was tight end number 29 his first year. He only played 10 games. I don't remember him having injuries more or less than just not, you know, just being a rookie. Right. 
Um, but yeah. you know, I just I heard there's a report that that um, that the coach, uh, what's his name, um, Sean Payton, Sean isn't Payton. thrilled with Greg Dulcich as a prospect. So that kind of worries me a mm-hmm. little bit there. So we'll see what happens this year. But Greg Dulcich is the best sleeper candidate out there for me. Um, Absolutely. He has the potential to jump really high up in my rankings next year, like top 10 roughly. But, yeah, I just don't have him there right now. He's very, very close to top 12, but he's not in my top 12 at this point in time. We saw flashes, but just not enough. And then you change the whole system around this kid, and it's it's hard to, to trust it, you know. All right, so my last two guys, I actually have two rookies. I'm going to have Michael Mayer and hey. Dalton Kincaid, um, both of them at 11 and 12. Now, this is a little bit controversial, but I do believe that these guys are both going to be first-round picks. Michael Mayer is the most Travis Kelsey tight end that we've had come out in a long time. Yep. The way the dude just finds the holes in the zone is crazy. He's just so reliable, and I get it, He's not the best athlete out there, but – He's extremely reliable, and that's what you got from Notre Dame. Yeah, he's not the 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 blazing guy that that Dalton Kincaid is, but you know Dalton Kincaid was a former basketball guy. He has very very good hands. He can't block to save his life, and he's from a, a weaker conference. Didn't have the same production that Michael Mayer did. Now I do like Dalton Kincaid, and I do believe he's going to ultimately be a first round pick. If he's a first round pick, it's going to be because of his pass catching jobs. He's going to be going somewhere to be utilized as more of a wide receiver than a tight end, which is why I like him for fantasy football. If you can get a Kyle Pitts rookie year, right, where he's getting a thousand yards, okay, he only had one touchdown that year. I don't know if that's consistent. Matt Ryan just did not throw touchdowns in the red zone ever for whatever reason. But, you know, Dalton Kincaid, if he goes to a decent offense, he's going to be like Kyle Pitts' rookie year, in my opinion. Now, Michael Meyer, I think that he's someone that is going to be like a TJ Hawkins in his first year, where he's going to finish right around, you know, right around top 12 for fantasy football. He's not going to have a massive year, but I think he could have 75 targets, 60 catches, and about 700 yards. Um, That just seems like a Michael Mayer stat line to me, so... I believe both these guys are going to be first-round picks. I think that their teams are going to draft them knowing what they they have in these two guys, and they're going to invest in them. So um, what are your thoughts on those two, and who are your last two guys? Yeah, on on uh, on on Michael Mayer is, is my 12th guy. Okay. And then I had Waller at, at, at 11, which I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, we already talked about Waller. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I yeah, I had Michael Mayer there. You know, I think out of the tight ends, out of the – of the early round tight ends, I think Michael Mayer be the one that really hits, and he's going to be very solid. Mm-hmm. Um, because limited like, ceiling, I, I, I will I, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it it is it is a more limited ceiling, but I would much rather have that in my tight ends compared to a Dalton Kincaid, which can be really robust, all, right. all depending on you know all these other factors. So you know, I I, I kind of feel that you know, like I honestly feel like Michael Mayer is. Is kind of the Travis Kelsey or, or like the Jason Witten type. Like he's not super athletic, mm-hmm. but he's 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 very smart and he knows how how to play a defense. Yeah, and the you one know, thing so, too, like the one the one piece of it, you know, no, Michael Mayer isn't the best athlete out there right now. Well, but everyone acts like once you get drafted in the NFL, you can't get better, and it's crazy to me. Like it annoys right. me every time. Yes, he can get better. Like he can get more athletic. You know, he can get a nutritionist that helps him do to get into the the best shape of his life. And you know, I just I, I'm so sick of these people saying like, oh yeah, once you get drafted, you're, you, that's what you are for the rest of your career. It's like, oh, they can get better, man. They can get better. So Michael Mayer is starting with a super high floor, and he can get better. You know, so that's all I'm saying. And yeah, no, I completely agree. And 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 then with uh, and then with Dalton Kincaid, I'm very excited about him. I, I think he's going to be going to be very explosive. Um, mm-hmm. I thought I uh, so I think that Lance Zerline had had, had him comp to uh, Zach Ertz, which I I I, I feel is honestly a, a very a very good comp because because like a very young Zach Ertz was. Very pass friendly, but really gonna block. Like he didn't have, like he wasn't very good at that. 
and you know it's it, it's it's with Kincaid. I think he's going to be super solid. You know, very good. All, all depending on landing spot and who his corner. Yeah, that's where we'll see what ultimately happens. But, yeah, we'll recap that on Thursday. Again, I think these two guys are probably guys I'm going to be recapping on Friday. So make sure you guys come back and check that out. And, yeah, it's going to be a fun show. It's going to be a fun draft on Thursday. Dale, any last thoughts on tight ends before we get out of here? Take them away from me. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> yeah, the last half is a little rough, you know. There's about seven well, guys that we, we trust for week to week, week in and week out. Um, startability, but yeah, the last guys are there's a little bit more projection to those guys or or hope or whatever. So, um, thank you guys there's again something. for joining us. Uh, you know, like I said, we got the draft on Thursday. You can hit us up on Twitter with any draft questions before the NFL draft if you have any. We're going to be doing the rock, the mock draft here in the next day or so. And yeah, you can find us on Twitter at TDC underscore Calvin at Dynasty underscore Dale. Thank you guys for joining us. And until next time. Have a good night.